If you've been in the hobby of astrophotography for a while, then you will have no doubt seen or heard about the ASI Air series of little mini astro computers from CWO. And if you haven't, well, where have you been? In today's video, we are looking at the new ASI Air Mini, the latest offering from ZWO. We'll take a look at what it offers versus the ASI Air Plus. How does it compare? And more importantly, should you buy one? So stick around to the end and see what I think of the Mini and if you should buy one. Oh, and before you ask, how small is it? Very small. Hey everybody, my name is Simon. You're watching Astroworks. Um, well, we're back in the studio today as the spring weather here in New Zealand is stopping me from getting outside to film. I think a lot of people are very familiar with the ZWO name. Their cameras are one of the most popular brands on the astro imaging market, and there will be very few astrophotographers that are not aware of the name or even own some of the gear. As part of their range, ZWO produces a little astro imaging computer called the ASI Air. These little red boxes are small, single board computers that are designed to be telescope mounted and to make the trip into the sometimes complex world of astrophotography a little easier. ZWO's tagline for the ASI Air range is as easy as 123. And while I personally don't find astrophotography quite that easy, there is no doubt in my mind that the ASI Air product has opened up astrophotography to many who would have never attempted it. So, if you're coming to this video as a complete newcomer, then this product is absolutely on the list of equipment purchases you'll want to make when setting up your new Astro Imaging rig. And if you are a newcomer, hit that subscribe button as our new series of beginner's tutorials for the ASI Air will be perfect for you. More experienced images should stick around too, as you might find something fun to add to your arsenal of Astro Imaging equipment. I mean, everybody's got room for a second or third imaging ring, right? The ASI Air is easy to use, simple and yet really powerful, and they connect all the spaghetti that comes with Astro Air Photography. And they also provide a fabulous set of tools that make Astro Imaging really easy. You connect to the ASI Air using an Android or iOS mobile device. You can use either a phone or a tablet, or even both. The ASI Air app is available for free from the app stores and allows you to control your imaging rig while you sit in your favourite astronomy chair outside, or even better still, in the warmth with that favourite beverage. Get more proficient with its use and you can even go to bed while the ASI Air captures the night skies for you. Sounds far-fetched, but the ASI Air handles automated image captures really well, and I for one find that I can image all night and still be mostly functional the next day for work. So what kind of gear does the ASI Air support? You can connect almost any of the cameras across the ZWO range, whether that's cooled, uncooled, or planetary, and it also supports a variety of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras too. You can check out the list of supported equipment on the ZWO product guide and I'll uh, keep a link in the description for you all. I will point out that the ASI is a partially closed ecosystem, so it won't support all the imaging equipment on the market. Do check the website carefully before purchasing one to ensure that you understand what it will support and what isn't covered. It will support most mounts on the market though, and they can be connected to the ASI Air either by cable or via Wi-Fi. Some of the more advanced lightweight camera trackers and uh, guiders are also supported, and the ASI Air provides some great features for these, like the very handy inbuilt Sky Atlas. This allows you to find your way around the sky and choose your object for imaging. The ASA Air app also has some great inbuilt features for astrophotographers such as electronic polar alignment, tools for manual focusing and support for full autofocus systems as well. The ASI Air also allows you to autogoge your mount and supports other ZWO accessories like the electronic focus motor, the EFW filter wheels and a bunch more. As well as the deep sky imaging features available, the ASI Air supports inbuilt live stacking, planetary video capture and a ton of tools for planetary imaging. It's a really flexible all-round box for astrophotography, regardless of your chosen genre. We will be running a whole series of videos on the ASI Air, how to connect it up and how to configure the app for imaging, 
and how to get the best out of it. So please like subscribe to our channel right now and follow along with our tutorials to get the best out of your Astro Imaging. One of the strongest points about the ASR Air ecosystem, I feel, is the frequency in which the app gets updates. This thing is literally getting updates every few months and the team at ZW are constantly adding features. Betas are openly shared and images actively encouraged to share feedback. This really keeps the app supplied with a never ending stream of great features to use in your imaging. And the latest version 2 release has seen some extensive updates applied to the platform. The app now supports advanced features like multi-frame mosaics, camera rotation angle support, as well as inbuilt post-processing tools for deep sky, planetary, video stacking and image processing right out of the box. This all means the ASA Air platform has become a feature rich tool and yet still remains in my opinion the easiest path into astrophotography and one that will support you whether you're a complete newcomer to imaging or a more advanced user. The great thing with the ASI Air is that you can choose the features that meet your needs now and the equipment you own today, but it remains flexible enough that it will grow as you do and provide more complex features as you move from beginner to a more advanced imager. The ASI Air hardware has evolved over the years from the original version that came in a plastic Raspberry Pi housing to the Pro and then to the Plus. And as the hardware evolves, so does the features offered. The newest Plus Edition offers a much more powerful CPU that supports all of these new and exciting advanced features. And now it's time to reveal what the newest version of the ASR Air family, the Mini, can offer. This compact and lightweight version of the ASR Air still supports most of the features of its bigger brothers, but in a cut down, lightweight package. Now ZWO are clearly aiming this at a different audience. It's not designed to replace the ASI Air Plus, uh, but it provides a smaller, lighter and notably cheaper entry to Astro Imaging using the ASI Air platform. That makes it very suitable for lightweight rigs, wide field imaging, camera trackers, or just adding another ASI Air to your existing telescopes. So let's look at the key features of the Mini. The first key difference is its size, it's around 41% smaller than the Plus and around 20% lighter. It still retains similar physical features to the Plus series, features an external Wi-Fi antenna, there's a Wi-Fi reset button. There's still a 12 volt DC in port, but it loses the on off switch. The system indicator LEDs are retained and a mounting foot is still provided, although on the Mini this can only be mounted on the base. The DSLR trigger port is still provided on the Mini, but there is no wired Ethernet port fitted. There are still four 12 volt DC outlets available, two on one side and two on the other. And the power through these is still the same as the bigger Plus series, although there have been some changes to the power management systems on the Mini. The micro SD card slot is also not fitted, and a key difference is that the Mini features four USB 2 ports with no USB 3 ports provided but more about that later. Overall, the Mini feels really solid. It's definitely smaller, compacter, and lighter. But what about the internal differences between the two? The Mini sees the start of a move away from the Raspberry Pi 4 boards to a new proprietary board using a four core ARM Cortex-A7 CPU. This drive is likely aimed to reduce the issues around global supply chain right now and ease up on product back orders and availability issues. With the Mini you get 2GB of RAM versus the 4GB on the Plus, but the Mini retains the 32GB of eMMC storage like the Plus, with around 20GB of that available for user usage. Looking at overall performance, the read-write times are slightly slower than the Plus, but in reality this means a few seconds longer when downloading a frame. And I found it doesn't make a huge amount of difference when you do deep sky imaging, bearing in mind that I might be doing 5, 10 or even 15 minute exposures. For electronically assisted astronomy this might have a bit more of an impact, so that's something that you might want to bear in mind if looking for the fastest download speed you can get. The Mini still features the same dual band Wi-Fi connectivity as the Plus, and station mode is still an available feature for use. For those not familiar with this mode, it means that the ASI Air connects to your home Wi-Fi network and then your mobile device can access the ASI Air while around the house. It's great for armchair images like me. One of the key changes on the Mini is that the DC outlets are no longer switchable or able to be controlled from the app. So the DC output for items such as dew heaters, flat panels and the like remain fixed at 12 volts. Consequently, there's no power output LEDs either. These are not fitted because basically they're either on or off all the time. 
You can still monitor the input voltage and current from the app though, and the DC outlets also retain the same capacity as the Plus series. That is, 3 amps per port with a maximum of 6 amps across all four ports. A new feature of the Mini is the ability to power the unit via the USB-C connector. Plugging in a 5 volt USB power source then powers the ASI Air. This new method of powering the Mini means that USB power packs could be used in the field to provide a lightweight battery powered rig. Of course, using that means that the 12 volt DC connectors are not available for use. So how does the ASA Air app vary between models? Putting it plainly, there are only a few differences between the app features supported by the Mini and the Plus and Pro series. Nearly all of the features work the same way, and great features like plate solving, autofocus, and the awesome Sky Atlas all work as they did in previous versions of the ASI Air. The power management is slightly changed too, but where things do change is the live stacking and video modes, so let's look a little closer at those. In live stacking mode, the Mini hasn't quite got the RAM size to deal with big frame sizes, and it only supports cameras up to APS-C size sensors. That means the big full frame sensors on the ASI 6200 and that medium format monster, the ASI 461, are not supported for use in live stacking. But they still work okay for deep sky imaging though. But if you do plan to use live stacking, then you will be limited to the maximum of APS-C size sensors. For video modes, the limitation is not in frame size, but in the available download speeds. The change of the USB 3 ports on the Plus series to all USB 2 on the Mini will limit the data rates from the camera. But that may not be a huge limitation for beginners, and only the most demanding of video users might want more. Additionally, serious video images will likely want to use a high-speed PC with much more processing power than the ASI can offer anyway. So overall, I don't think this is a deal breaker, especially as the ASI Air is aimed at the newcomer to Astra Imaging, regardless of the flavour. So what was the Mini like to use? Let's talk about mounting first. I found the ASI Air Mini slightly easier to mount as it's not quite as bulky as the Plus version and it fitted really nicely into the finder foot on the FRA500. It also meant that the USB cables didn't always catch on other parts of the scope too and that meant I could slot the Mini into spaces I could have not fitted the Plus in. For a lightweight imaging rig such as my Ascot ACL200 the Mini fits easily onto the finder shoe and I didn't find that it added that much weight, this thing only weighs 160 grams. Combined with the new USB power option, that really makes for a basis of a lightweight imaging rig. In operation, the ASI Air Mini version behaves no different to its bigger brothers, and I didn't notice any major changes between the two, apart from a slight increase in download times. This uh, didn't really bother me too much, as my dark skies here in rural New Zealand mean I'm usually doing 10 or 15 minute exposures anyway, so a few seconds per frame are no real big deal for me. I haven't gotten around to use it on any planetary imaging yet due to our wet spring, but I'm sure Tyler might get into that more for you in a future video. I do find the ASI Air app on a tablet is a real draw to kids at the observatory open nights. They really find it intuitive to use, being so familiar with this kind of interface. And with a few minutes of instruction on how to choose and capture images, they're often running, pointing the telescope around the sky and capturing images. This really opens up a whole range of discussion too, when they have to get their head around how they can see stuff on the screen but can't see it by eye. And then this leads into discussions about human eyesight, night vision, emission versus reflection nebula, and a whole evening of fun and education for them. All that due to the little ASI Air and that digital interface to the world of astronomy. So would I recommend the ASI Air Mini? And the answer is absolutely. For newcomers, this is a great entry level ASI Air that offers nearly all of the fabulous features found in the ASI Air Plus. It's small, lightweight, and you can use this on everything from a small wide field setup to much more complex rigs as well. It's currently priced at 199 US dollars, that's about $100 cheaper than the Plus, which is significant if you are on a budget. For the more experienced imager, this gives you an opportunity to build a second budget price rig, or a cheap way to add a second ASI Air and save you swapping them between telescopes all the time. You might also find the driver to build that wide field rig using that camera lens you've been promising yourself. Either way, the little ASI Air is fun and packs a real feature punch for the money. And it drives all of the accessories you'd want from cameras to mounts to filter wheels and focuses. It's 
it's got it all. So it's definitely on my highly recommended list. Grab one, you really will love it, even if you have a bigger, more complex imaging platform. The kids will love it too, and it's a fabulous way to get them interested in the hobby. Overall, I really like the little ASI Air Mini. It's sturdy, neat, and compact, and I've found using it on my USB power pack during testing so much easier than dragging out a large mains power supply too. It was easy to mount, and following my initial test, the Mini is now being relocated to its new home on top of the wide field rig where it's going to live, and I will cover off the build and setup of this in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the release news from ZWO, and of course, we'd love to hear your comments on how you're going to use the little ASI Air Mini. We'd also like to know if there's any particular topics you'd like to see, so please add them in the comments and Tyler and I'll look at see if we can do a video for you. Thanks for watching, until next time, I'm Simon and you've been watching Astroworks.